Okay, so I wanted to make some saddle bags, and I didn't want to pay $200 for four spacers and four bolts and four nuts from end end, so I made my own. And basically, I used, um, I'll leave a link in the description to all these things. I used some one inch rubber washers, one inch metal washers, some bolts, and some one inch drilled, pre drilled aluminum bar stock. And then uh, some, I think they were M8 by one and a quarter by uh, 60 millimeter bolts. I'll also go ahead and mention that I bought the leather saddle bags also from Amazon and I'll link to them below. Total cost of all of this was about two and a half hours of time and less than 150 bucks. So I'm getting ready to make these mounts and what I got to do is I got to cut this aluminum bar stock down. You can see it's already got a hole in it, but I got to cut that down on the bandsaw and I've got it at about one and three quarters of an inch. camera on see what you can see so the way this is going to work is we got this bolt that'll actually go through it'll have a washer it'll have a metal washer two rubber washers and then another metal roll washer that'll go up against the head part right then that's what's going to actually hold the saddle bag then this will be the spacer to move it farther the saddle bag farther away from the bike so it's going to end up looking something like this when it's all said and done and you can see there's just only about three sixteenths or a quarter of an inch of threads left over so the threads have got to be short anyways so that they don't hit the tire so now that I've got this part done what I've got to do is these bolts are basically the same size as the washer they don't screw on there so I just kind of need to like drill the washers out vice grips to hold through now we fit you see that so now it fits in there the washer's not too bad hot now I just need eight of them like that Thank you, Wass, for being such a nice co-host and not bothering me while I was in here drilling and sawing and all that stuff. And I know there's probably people that are going to be like, oh, there's probably no wasp even up here. Uh, no, it's plumb full. Look. See him crawling around? Hear him? I just, I have plans for that wasp nest after they're done with it. So I'll let them live there and keep building it out because the more they build it out, the cooler my project's going to be. And uh, as long as they're not bothering me, I'm not going to bother them. That's the way that works. What I've done is I've lined it up with the bike and I took a marker 
and kind of marked on the inside roughly where my hole needs to be at. And now I'm going to drill the holes on this side. I've got it lined up pretty good. Um, I've actually got a flashlight because although it looks bright outside, it's actually dark. Getting dark. It's 846. So, uh, at the end of July. So, you know it's already starting to get dark. The sun's going down. Anyways, what I got to do now, I got to look to make sure I can still see where my marks are at inside here. I think I can. And then I got to drill one side, put everything in place to make sure it looks okay. And if it does, I got to then transfer the marks from this side to the other side and then hope and pray that the bolts are in the same location. I think I can do it with it off the bike anyways. I hope. I can't even really see where in the heck the marks are at now though because it's gotten dark. Was literally like a sixteenth of an inch off. I can deal with that. <laughs> Let's see if I can get lucky twice. I think it's about right there. And that one there too is just only about a sixteenth of an inch off. That is pure luck. But honestly I used to do mechanic work and you just kind of get to know feel for stuff that felt right so i went with it so the way that this works is i'll kind of show you here so you take a washer a metal washer and you put it on the screw then you put a rubber washer then this goes through that hole we just created then you put another rubber washer on the outside, another metal washer on the outside, then one of our spacers. So I was going to take the bolts back out and use and just line these up and then transfer the bolt holes from one to the other so they were relatively the same. But in all honesty, I can do this with a tape measure. This actually looks about correct. I think I'm just going to leave it right there where it's at. Alright. Now the other thing I want to do, so I'm going to go ahead and drill these two holes. The next thing I want to do is that the leather strap isn't going to allow me to adjust these tight enough against each other. It's not going to let it pull in far enough. I got to add more holes. So the reason why I really got that square was so that I could keep this straight line and the spacing correct on these holes that I'm putting in right here on this part on both pieces. And we're just going to drill these out. Don't think that's going anywhere. All right, so does seem better. Actually, it does seem better. And this is what it looks like, fully installed. Now you got to remember the bike is leaning, so they're going to kind of look like they're out of balance, but they're really not. I 
I'm not really too crazy about the uh, the way that the uh, silver brackets look, but I could paint those black. Of course, we still got like pieces of leather on the bike. The bike needs cleaned up, but I think that's going to be perfectly functional. I think that even I've got one of the uh, passenger seats and I think that the passenger seats basically going to just fit right over this and mount back here like it should and be just fine like you're not going to notice anything so the only reason why I have saddlebags I wanted something that was going to look more old schoolish I think it looks pretty decent I wanted something that was going to look old schoolish and I wanted something that was going to be different than everybody else because let's face it, even if you went with the factory saddlebags, you ain't got a whole lot of options for colors or look or style or anything like that. You got the cookie cutter design everybody else bought. So good chance that there's going to be a bike just like yours out there on the road. And uh, people aren't going to know if it's you or someone else. But I'm trying to be everything unique. First thing I did when I bought this, I saw that it had breakaway brake and clutch levers and I broke away intentionally one of them why because I don't like cookie cutter stuff my Jeep is different than any other Jeep might be the same color as other Jeeps but I can tell my Jeep it could be in a parking lot full of Jeeps that same color and I can find mine this could be in a parking lot of Indian Chief Dark Horses and I can find mine easy because I intentionally broke this one lever Plus, I don't like them because they're that chrome color anyways. I actually thought about, you know, if I could find black ones, I'll probably replace them with black. And you know what I'll do? I'll break the end off of one of them. Makes it really easy for me to tell my bike from any other bike. Now, another thing about that is if this bike were to ever be stolen and I tell a guy, a cop, hey, I got a 2023 Indian Chief Bobber Dark Horse with saddlebags on it. It's black. Because it's a dark horse. <laughs> and he could pass a hundred dark horses on the road. And not know if it's my bike. If I say hey. I got a 2023 Indian Chief Bobber dark horse. That. The. Uh, front brake pedal. Or the front brake lever. Is broke off. If you're driving down the road. You can see that it's broke off. Very easy to spot this bike. I'll never have anything perfect because I'm not perfect. I intentionally mess something up on everything I own. Just so it's easier to identify. Anyways. Thanks for watching. As always, God bless you. God bless your families. God bless your homesteads.